When we say green chemistry, we mean environmentally friendly chemical processes and doing chemistry with personal safety and the environment in mind. There are 12 principles designed to help make chemistry greener. We will discuss each of these 12 principles with an example. Let's start with a simple concept. If you keep your room neat and tidy, you won't have to clean up as much. If your room gets really messy, then you will have a lot to clean up. The same concept is applied in green chemistry. If we prevent waste from being produced, then there would be less to clean up. Now, this is almost impossible to have zero waste for any given chemical reaction. On a global scale, the beauty of this principle is that it can be applied to almost every single chemical reaction conducted. For example, polystyrene is a fossil fuel derived polymer used to make all disposable cups and packaging materials. The polymer itself needs to be expanded before it can be used in packaging. Traditionally, this was done with CFCs or chlorofluorocarbons, which deplete the ozone layer. Now, this is done with carbon dioxide waste from other industrial processes. Instead of releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and contributing to the greenhouse effect, this is contained and used to expand polystyrene. So there is no additional carbon dioxide being released into the atmosphere. This principle encourages the design and therefore the use of less hazardous or toxic chemicals. In research and chemical industries, drug developers always look towards using chemicals that are chiral. These are molecules that have a particular shape. This minimizes the unwanted side effects that some drugs can have. Think about it like a pair of gloves. The right hand glove can only fit over your right hand and the left hand glove can only fit over your left hand. Drug industries try to produce medicines, whereby 100% of the drug produced is chiral. This fulfills another rule of green chemistry, by minimizing the amount of unwanted products, i.e. drugs that have the wrong chirality. Carefully tweaking parts of a drug's design can also be useful, as drug designs can be used to target specific organs, making the drug less likely to have unwanted side effects. The next time you look at tights, certain paints, or even plastics used in window frames, you may want to think about the raw materials from which they are made. Do you know any of these materials? Pause the video, think, and resume when ready. If you said nylon for tights, you'd be right. If you said polyurethane, you'd be right for paints and coatings. Finally, plastic window frames are made of PVC. These contain a plasticizer, allowing the frames to be easily molded. All of these materials require adipic acid in their production. Usually, benzene is used to make this compound, but unfortunately, benzene is carcinogenic or cancer-causing. Instead, glucose and a special enzyme extracted from genetically modified bacteria can be used to produce adipic acid. What do you think is the advantage in doing the synthesis in this way? Pause the video, think about this, and resume when ready. The answer is that glucose is harmless and is essentially sugar. So conducting the synthesis in this way protects the workers who would produce this compound by coming into contact with carcinogenic benzene. Chemical reactions often need a solvent in order for them to take place. Can you remember what a solvent does? Pause the video and continue when ready. The answer is that a solvent will dissolve a solute. This means that two or more soluble compounds may then react with one another 
to form a new product. The issues are that a lot of chemical processes involve organic solvents, that is those containing carbon and hydrogen, and sometimes halogen groups. Organic solvents are usually obtained from the fractional distillation of crude oil. This is an environmentally unfriendly process which uses a lot of energy and produces greenhouse gases. Also, the solvents themselves are usually environmentally unfriendly and need to be disposed of carefully. Chemists around the world are looking towards green chemistry and the development of safer solvents. It may sound surprising, but these safer solvents include special forms of water and carbon dioxide, which exist in a supercritical state. Essentially, this means that at a certain temperature, these solvents will exist as a solid, liquid and gas simultaneously. You may be wondering why this is important. The reason is that non-polar compounds traditionally needing organic solvents can be dissolved in a safer solvent. More importantly, carbon dioxide and water are not flammable, like most organic solvents, and are very easy to obtain from other chemical processes. Imagine, instead of releasing carbon dioxide into the air and it contributing to global warming, we can collect it and use it as a solvent instead. This has been especially useful to the dry cleaning and textiles industries. Most often, chemists find themselves working with many dangerous chemicals and dangerous processes. Can you think of any reasons that chemicals or chemical processes that could present a danger to workers in this field? Pause the video and continue when ready. The main reasons are that the chemicals used to make a product could be very toxic, explosive, or corrosive. And it's not just about the chemicals. Some chemical processes require high temperature and pressures to produce certain chemicals. Such temperatures and pressures have been known to cause fires, explosions, and serious chemical accidents at the plants. Minimizing the potential for accidents has been written into the mantra of green chemistry by using less harmful chemicals and or reducing the amount of heat or pressure a chemical process requires. Catalysis Can you remember what a catalyst does? If so, pause the video, say your answer, and continue to see if you're right. An answer is that catalyst increases the rate of a chemical reaction. This means that desired products can be made more quickly by using a lower energy pathway. As well, a catalyst is regenerated, so it can be reused over and over again. However, despite these advantages, do you know of any disadvantages to using catalysts? Pause the video, think about this, and continue when ready. You might have said that catalysts can often be expensive, in some cases made of toxic metals, or in the case of a biological catalyst known as an enzyme, it can be very selective about the chemicals it's exposed to and might only work in a narrow temperature range. Often, metal catalysts are used in drug design and ensures that a chemical adopts a particular chirality. Yet enzymes or biological catalysts provide countless examples of being able to fill the same role as a metal catalyst. The key advantage of enzymes are that the reactions can be performed under aqueous conditions and at ambient temperatures. In industry, desulfurization of fuels by catalysis is used to reduce atmospheric sulfur. Can you think why this might be important? Pause and continue when ready. The correct answer is that sulfur, which ends up in the atmosphere, can contribute to acid rain. Therefore, better catalysts are being developed to remove sulfur from fuels to prevent atmospheric issues later. In addition, the development of fuel cells is leading to better electrocatalysis. This is to improve the efficiency of the redox reactions that take place in these fuel cells, so that they don't have to be recharged as often. One of the biggest challenges that chemists face is knowing what impact their synthesis is going to have on the environment. 
monitoring a process on a small scale to see what pollution is produced at a particular stage of a reaction can reduce the pollution that's produced in the large-scale synthesis. Can you think how? Pause the video and continue when you're ready. An answer might be that looking at the pollution produced on a small scale and in real time will enable chemists to know where they have to change in their large-scale synthesis to ensure their practices have a lower environmental impact. Many chemical processes are designed to be as efficient as possible. There are many reasons why this is done. Firstly, it is very costly if a chemical synthesis is not designed to be efficient. In industry, chemists are aiming to modify or develop reactions so that they will proceed at ambient temperature and pressure. This is because it costs energy to produce both high and very low temperatures. The 2005 Nobel Prize for Chemistry was jointly awarded to a group of chemists who developed an energy efficient catalyst for a high atom economy reaction so that it was able to proceed at standard ambient temperature and pressure. Recall that a high atom economy reaction is one that uses all the atoms in the reactant to create the product or products. The reaction is called the metathesis method and is responsible for the synthesis of many polymers with special properties, additives to polymers and fuels and biologically active compounds such as insect pheromones, herbicides and drugs. So far, many of our plastic products are derived from crude oil, which is a non-renewable source. We cannot grow or produce crude oil, this means that we don't have an infinite supply of it. Instead, we must wait millions of years in order for dead carbon-based living organisms to be compressed by layers and layers of sediment before we get crude oil. The term renewable feedstock refers to raw material that can be grown or produced by humans. The usage of renewable feedstock is attractive because it reduces the amount of harmful waste produced from the crude oil refinery and distillation processes. Most printer inks are made from crude oil derived pigments. If you think about the amount of printing that is done on a global scale, this can be a problem in the long term. Currently in development are soy-based inks, which are derived from the oil of the soybean plant. As a plant, soybeans are a renewable resource. The production process of these inks is overall more environmentally friendly than their petroleum-based counterparts. Also, these soy-based inks are much brighter than the petroleum-based inks. The recycling process of paper products printed with soy-based inks is also considerably more environmentally friendly. When paper products are recycled, the ink needs to be removed. Petroleum inks can be difficult to remove, but soy-based inks can be removed with relative ease. A lot of waste is produced on a global scale. Unless the waste is recycled, it fills up in our landfills, destroys habitats, and will be a very serious health hazard. Imagine if one day the waste that we produce can be naturally broken down by microbes in the environment or dissolve into safer materials. This principle explores such a concept. Ideally, whatever we use and throw away would present no hazard to the environment and would not accumulate in landfills. If you've ever had to get stitches because of an injury, the stitches slowly dissolve over time. This is in fact a polymer called polyglycolic acid, which is broken down into its respective monomers by enzymes in our body. This is then either respired as carbon dioxide or excreted in our urine. There is a new class of plastics known as the bioplastics. These polymers are made from natural monomers, such as cellulose and lactic acid, and can be broken down in the environment. For more information on these, please see our synthetic polymers video. 
As a result of these bioplastics, carrier bags can be broken apart by microbes in the environment. This is important because it reduces the amount of waste that accumulates in landfills. Egg cartons, once made of polystyrene, which is derived from petroleum-based products, are now usually packaged in recycled newspaper material, which can be recycled and therefore do not accumulate as waste. If you wanted to make a cake, you would add flour, eggs, water, baking soda, and your favorite flavors. You may add more ingredients, but the important idea here is that all the ingredients will be included in the final product, your cake. Following on the same idea, reactions with a high atom economy is one where all of the atoms in the reactants are included in the final desired product. Such a reaction would have little, if any, waste produced. According to the law of conservation of mass, no atoms are created or destroyed in a reaction. The atoms from the reactants are simply rearranged to form products. So why not maximize a certain reaction so that no atoms are wasted as side products? Going back to the cake example, it wouldn't be a good idea to add all those ingredients, but then find that one of them is not baked into your final cake. Here's a quick challenge for you. When an alkene, such as hex-2-ene, is hydrogenated in the presence of a metal catalyst, what is the product? Pause, think, and resume when ready. The answer is hexane. This hydrogenation reaction has a 100% atom economy. The final product, hexane, has all the atoms from the reactants, hex-2-ene and hydrogen, no atoms are wasted as unwanted byproducts. Furthermore, the use of a catalyst makes this process very efficient and the catalyst can be reused. You may have learned about functional groups, which are sites in a molecule where a reaction occurs. Some molecules may have more than one functional group. Now, this may be a problem if you're carrying out a reaction, but you only want the reaction to occur at one particular functional group. To prevent the other functional groups from reacting, we must protect them. So to do so, we must add a protecting group or a derivative. These groups are also called blocking groups. This can be an issue because it costs time and energy to add and remove these protecting groups. As well, a lot of unnecessary waste is produced in this process. Think about a small stain on your shirt. It would be unnecessary to clean the entire shirt when there is only one small stain. It would be a waste of water, laundry detergent, and energy. These chemists, in an effort to be more environmentally friendly, are developing chemoselective methods and syntheses. This means that the reaction will happen only at a particular functional group, so there is not a need to block the other functional groups that may be present.